cultural assumptions. Um, I have a cultural assumption story which I'm not very proud of. I would love to know uh, how I could have handled this situation better. Uh, so this is when uh, I traveled to Russia in 2007 uh, with a Chinese colleague of mine. And uh, we had a cab driver called Oleg. Right? Uh, and as you recommend in your book, I did my homework on Russian culture, history, the things that they're proud of, and so on. And they are a very patriotic country. Right? Uh, so this one time when we were going uh, somewhere, I looked at statues of the Red Army soldiers by the side of the road. And uh, I said, wow, at their peak, the Red Army was the best army in the world. All it turns back and says, I'm Czechoslovakian. I hate the communists. <laughs> and I have someone from China sitting next to me. So how could I have avoided that? Uh, if not avoided that, uh, what could I have done next to make the situation better? You could have jumped out of the taxi. <laughs> also now. <laughs> but um, actually, you know, that's the pitfall. We were talking about cultural pitfalls and cultural engagement opportunities. But you did the right thing, right, Abhishek? You did your homework, you gave, you started the conversation with the other person's interest in mind, and you had done all of that. But you know, sometimes our assumptions can be wrong, and we have to actually be able to adapt and quickly take the onus of a self-deprecatory remark. Stupid me, yes, of course I should have known that. I'm so sorry, Oleg, how dumb of me. It's like you coming and saying to me, so are you Brahmin? What's the caste system in India? And turning it on yourself and saying, you know, I would have been really found it rather irritating that someone said that to me, so I guess I've done the wrong thing. So sometimes to get out of copas, I've often said, duh, silly me, and that usually gets us out of it. But the poor Chinese guy, that's between him and the Czech, right? What yeah. can you do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, book, right? Uh, called What's in a Name, says that uh, Indians tend to have like long names with a lot of syllables. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the easiest to pronounce for right. someone who's not an Indian. Right? And you suggest that uh, we should consider uh, shortening our names uh, to something like that's two syllables, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, when we're communicating with someone. Uh, felt to me like that was taking a back step. Mm -hmm. right? and, uh, if that is the case, I don't know if I necessarily agree. Okay. So what's the right balance between preserving your identity, representing who you truly are, and at the same time, uh, uh, sort of, uh, understanding what makes the other person tick, mm. and uh, just making the most out of that transaction for both parties? Okay. Abhishek, that's a correct question coming from your side of the age group. So I want to say that the average age of India is What's the average age of India? 25. 25, and that's the average age of Facebook, perhaps. Right? Yes? Not India. India's probably lesser. Most probably, that's the age. So at that time, what do you value? And you have to be able to hold on to what you value there. And uh, I'm saying, the reason I said shorten your name in the first chapter is, People don't interact with you in the rest of the world till they book the hook of your name because relationship building is always about knowing the other person's name in most of the Western world, not necessarily in India. So I recommended that. For instance, I don't know, I should do this as a demo. Matt, can you be my demo guy here? That's what I'm saying. So have you had an Indian colleague who, in Facebook who you've been introduced to that you couldn't quite catch the name of? Uh, probably. Maybe less here, but I worked at Microsoft for many years, and mm -hmm. that was definitely true. Okay. So we have several, seven, eight, nine, fourteen syllables to our names, right? So is there anyone here from Andhra Pradesh? An Indian on the Facebook team? Do you have a longish name? Can you give him your full name? Can you come up? This is the demo. Why should I shorten my name? This is the demo. I don't care. Let him change. Let him learn to say my name if he wants to do business with me. Yeah, yeah we can say that. But I want you to say your full name, your village name, your name, you know, that whole name. Please say it and say it at your usual speed. Don't think about Matt and the color of his t-shirt. Chaparala Kirin Kumar. Good. 
this uh, and then the easy task is you have to call him and assign that next platform job to him. Nice to meet you. <laughs> no, you gotta say his name. Yeah, uh, Chopra, that was about as far as I got. Uh, that's how far they could get. Yeah. yeah. See, so we're very quick to please as well. You're really good at that. See how easily we encourage you. We are like that only. We yeah, want to encourage you. Huh? Sorry, ma'am. That was terrible. That was terrible. That wasn't terrible. We'll never tell you you're terrible. So this is what you have to learn about us. We won't ever say, oh, you're terrible, that's terrible. We might feel it, we might think it, but we wouldn't say it. Because our culture doesn't allow us. So I want to come back to indirect and direct communication. Right? That's what we do. We might leave this room and say, that guy was terrible, he couldn't even say my name, or we wouldn't say it to you. But see the ease of communication here, Abhishek, it would be much easier if you called yourself, what's your short name? Kiran. Can you say that? Yes. Okay. Kiran. There you go. So thank you very much, and I have a prize for the people who participate in our demos. So thank you very much. Come back and pick up your prizes, Matt and Kiran.